And welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to part 20, and possibly the last part of the What If Tsunade Adopted Naruto saga. Uh, and you'll notice we're trying a new format with this. Someone had suggested that they like it better if there's background with the What Ifs. The What Ifs were the one that I'm a little iffy on doing the background with, because ultimately it wouldn't change anything. Uh, unlike with the Who Would Win, it does give you a bit more context of who I'm talking about. Uh, this one, it doesn't change much, but I think I'm going to give it a shot, and, you know, I'll appreciate any feedback, positive or negative. Uh, but last time on Naruto, what if, what if Tsunade adopted Naruto? Part 20. Last time, uh, Danzo had tried to, basically, you know, manipulate the Kage arc to his summit to his benefit, but he got found out. Now, someone asked what happened to him. Well, the same thing happened to him that honestly happened... Previously, he went up against Ob uh, Obito Tobi, and then Sasuke did, originally did get involved. However, he doesn't have Sasuke this time. What he does have, though, is a Kasami. <laughs> uh, this, is, I think, would be a perfect scenario to bring Kasami in to basically vent his frustration, things along those lines, about you losing Samahata. Uh, and th eventually, they would take out Donzo and the gang. So that's what happens with Donzo, and we still get the Fourth Shinobi War uh, World Art War Dark. Yeah. The fourth great Shinobi world arc. Now, a lot of some things are going to go the same. Like, your your uh, Hinata and Sasuke are going to be bothered, ask why Naruto isn't with them, is because Naruto is a Jinchuriki and we can't let him out there. It's for his own safety. We have no choice. So he's going to go to the island and beat. Now the whole scenario happens pretty much the same, barring this. Uh, obviously, he learns to gain control of Fox's chakra. He meets Kushina. He meets his biological mother for the first time. And this is something that Naruto was not prepared for. Like, he he didn't even get the chance to meet his dad. Uh, because the Fox Chakra never took control in the last uh, version of, it, of the... Uh, in the last episode of this version of this, uh, the story. So, honestly, he wouldn't meet Kashina first. He'd meet his dad. And I think, honestly... With that in mind, I think they actually both would come out. And they would sit down and they'd have a conversation. Uh, to, you know, he'd tell them the story of how they met and everything along those lines. Like, no, I'm, I'm so sorry we weren't there for you. It's like, it's okay. And it's like, no, nah, uh, Mama said not. Uh, Kashi and Anze, and he offhandedly says mom. And he realizes that well, he's talking to his biological mom, but Tsunade's mom. And because so, uh, she's a little hurt by that, but she understands too. He's like, no, you ha we were watching from inside the seal. We saw your life, and we couldn't be happier for you, and we're so proud of Tsunade for what she did for you, and we'll always be grateful to her and grateful to you. Thanks, Mom. And, you know, he get, uh, and he basically, because it's Naruto, he's got that giant heart of gold. So, you know, he just gives her a hug, too, and she kind of gets some tears, and Minaz's like, yeah, we got to go now. He's like, yeah, we do, don't we? So they help him corral Kurama. Now, Killer B doesn't have Samahata, and or um, does he have... Um, <clears throat> does he have uh, Kisame with him? So, really, just as a matter of whether or not they try to capture them, uh, Kabuto or uh, Orochimaru, I honestly don't know if they would attempt to capture them. I think right now they're busy, you know, working with Obito, but the whole Edo Tensei thing. So I think this time around they do not get involved. Uh, eventually, though it gets slipped out and they go to the battlefield, everything along those lines. Now, uh, Raikage still steps forward to try to stop him. Kushida gets in, uh, Tsunade gets in front of him, as we see right here. And ultimately, nothing, uh, nothing of note comes out of that entire scenario. Uh, it, it, it nothing changed. That's the thing at this, once we get to this point in the series, there is no huge drastic changes and they affect the long term until we get, you know, to Kaguya and all that stuff. Uh, because Naruto's power is still about the same, he just has different techniques. So he's throwing out different Rasengans, all that. The, everything he can do uh, previously, he can do now, and to some degree, better effect. So nothing is drastically changing, with the exception that Sasuke is on the front line with Hinata, who is not with Team 7. Uh, or Team uh, H, he's with Team 7. So, where uh, basically Sakura was, of course, she was a medic, so that that doesn't really work the same way. But um, where Team 7 with Kakashi was, they're probably actually dealing with the Seven Swordsmen. That's what they're probably dealing with. 
Now that does go again down roughly the same, probably even easier because Sasuke is just so much more powerful now. But you still get that interaction again with the few former swords, uh, seven swordsmen there are were. Uh, Zabza obviously and the Wave are getting involved in this fight as well. It's basically a fight to get the Jinchuriki. By the by, yes, Gurren would also have been there. Now, that would have also, uh, I think B also would have helped her gain control of the um, Sanabi as well. I don't think it would be give you give him or give her a glowing turtle cloak like he gets a glowing fox cloak, but still, they, she does gain pretty much mastery over the Sanabi Chakra. Now, to be fair, she was already getting there anyway, but she definitely has that. So now it's basically Team Jinchuriki to the rescue. Now, you'll get the Itachi confrontation with them. Fortunately, Gurren is there to aid B and Naruto, so it goes a bit easier in the favor because a third party's there to help. And again, they put down uh, Naruto. Now, Sasuke does eventually catch up to Itachi. Uh, I think because I think he hears about that and he needs to basically just... Um, well, he eventually catches up to Itachi. But I, I, I should clarify right now, he does eventually join the front line... But I think prior to the war starting, he does get the surgery for the Mange, the eternal Mange Kyo. So he does take him a little bit, but still what I said is true. He does show up on the front line, help with uh, Kakashi and the swordsman, and does go after Itachi. Only this time it's not about, you know, the whole, no, it's I can't forgive him or anything. It's like, Itachi, wait, wait, I gotta talk to you. God damn it, slow down. And, you know, it's like, we gotta stop this. It's like, I understand we gotta stop that. I'm agreeing with you. And then he's like, really? He's like, brother? I was like, yeah, I just want to say I understand, I get it, and I understand what you, why you did what you did. As much as it hurts me to have mom and dad gone, I forgive. And he actually says it. I forgive you for what you did. I understand what you did, and I, I still care about you as my brother. Which you know, Itachi's, you know, eyes widen, but he goes, you know, and he says, it's there's nothing you need to apologize for, Sasuke. You did, never did anything wrong. It's like that's not the point, though. It's like you, you didn't do anything wrong either. You did what you felt was best. And they had that moment, and they both go. Now, because... Because... Uh, you have Kabuto and Orochimaru there, and they both probably have the Endo ten, uh, Tensei at this point. Um, but because they're there, they have a much larger Edo Tensei army. But they have to remain stationary, more or less. Um, so you get Naruto and that Madara fight... They'll confront the two, and basically you now get Itachi versus and Sasuke versus Kabuto and um, Orochimaru. And basically say, ah, uh, Sasuke, I knew you'd come. Uh, and Itachi, it's a shame that you're just a dead body. I would love to give your eyes. Uh, but I, I'll have to settle for your brother, won't I? Ah. Uh. It's such a glorious day, isn't it, Kabuto? Yes, Roger, much higher it is. Still, we will have to deal with Itachi, and that will be troublesome. And so, you know, the fight begins with them. And unfortunately, it is still going to go the same way. Like, Kabuto and Orochimaru both get trapped in uh, Izanagi. Not Izan it wasn't Izanagi, it was Izanami. Izan and both get trapped in Izanami. And basically, it's like, we need first to wait. And, you know, Sasuke's about to, you know, Amaterasu and both. And it basically says, wait, Sasuke, no, we need them to undo the jutsu. And eventually, because basically he had to give up both his eyes to get both of them. So he's pretty much blind and do, 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 uh, you know, go, goes blind. So get the, he basically says for teaches Sasuke that, you know, the charring the trick to undo the jutsu does undo, basically he learns to undo the jutsu. And then, um, or the, then Sasuke basically. I think Sasuke would probably burn them up. I think it's just, you know, he sets them on fire, a blaze, and that's kind of the end of it. Because the reason he didn't do it previously, because he still needed stuff from them. This guy is, no, doesn't need anything from them, and they're a threat. So he eventually just, just incinerates them until they burn to ash and there's nothing left. Um, so, uh, you know, he goes out, aids. Now you're dealing with the whole Madara issue. Uh, he still gets the Kage's fight and lose miserably. Uh, Obuto has the remaining Jinchuriki, minus the Sanabi, so it's basically that Jinchuriki versus Jinchuriki, Gurren's there, so it helps aid the fight a little bit, but ultimately, they're still in a, they're still in a bit, bit of a pickle. Again, it comes down to Naruto getting control of the Ninetale Fox, helps save the day, they all give a little bit of chakra to him, hooray. A lot of stuff goes the same at this point in the story, where, you know, they're fighting against Obito, 
Uh, yeah, really, there's not a huge amount that changes at this point. Uh, even with, like, Gurren there, uh, Naruto having other techniques, um, Sasuke being completely on their side, there's just not a huge amount of stuff that changes with the story at this point. Even with, uh, even with, yeah, honestly, I was about to say, even with Kaguya, there's not much to change. They'll still, you know, be taken down temporarily, and then, ultimately, they will, um, they will take Kaguya down. There ultimately is not a huge de amount that changes once we get... That's the biggest problem with any of these uh, Naruto what-ifs that I, I seem to realize, is that unless the change is so drastic that a character that had a pivotal moment in the series is dead at this point, there isn't going to be a lot that changes, if anything. Uh, like, again... So, like, certain fights might change. Naruto might use the Tornado Fist, or, you know, he might use this Wind Chakra Scalpels in this version. But ultimately, the, the result comes down to be the same thing. The only difference here is Sasuke and Naruto don't have that final fight, which results in them losing their arms. That doesn't happen. So, it just kind of ends up going well. Um, you know, Naruto and Inata do get married. Sasuke and Sakura end up, you know, getting married. Uh, Gurren, I think, probably finds herself a nice young man or something like that. And, you know, Mizukage and, uh, Zabza probably have a kid or something. I don't know. Pairings! Pairings everywhere! Screw it! I hook up Kakashi and Gurren. That's, that's my logic right there. Although, um, no, he became the Okage, so he could, he wouldn't have time for that at, at that moment. So after he's done, after, he, after he's done with that and gives it to Naruto, yeah, him and Gurren have a kid. I don't know. I'm <laughs> just throwing things out there at this point. Um, I, I don't go into the Baruto years because, A, I don't read or watch Baruto, and I don't, the little I have, I'm not a fan of it, so, that's just, uh, that's just my two cents on that. But that is pretty much the wrapped up what if of what if Naruto were adopted by Tsunade. Seemed a little rush, I could have probably added an extra ten minutes if I really wanted to, and we would have been right in the average time length, but, no, ultimately, that's where I want to keep it, so, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be starting a new what if tomorrow. Oh yeah, we're done with this. We're done with the uh, Goku sister one. So we're on to a new what if. What will that what if be? Well, I'll just uh, wait for tomorrow to surprise you folks now, won't I? Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. And ideas for who would win. Star Wars, Super Mario Magic, what if? Anything I do on this channel, put that in the comments below. Let me know. I'll do a review of that at some point. See you later. Uh, I got who would win? No, who would win? Uh, I got the box office and what if tomorrow. Those are about it. Uh, we'll see if something else comes up, but that's about it. So until then, thanks for watching. See you next time, folks. Later.